Hello everyone, welcome to Cornflower Crafts. I'm Corn, and this is Words for Wednesday, and I thought I'd bring you all along to show you what I'm working on these days. And a couple of nights ago, I started the mixed media, which I have never done before. I had the supplies for years. Well, you know, not, not 10 years, but you know, it was before the pandemic. And in fact, probably quite a bit before the pandemic because this gesso I got at, I'm pretty sure Artist Loft is Michael's and uh, I don't shop at Michael's very <laughs> I go in there once in a blue moon. So I it's okay. Everybody will say gesso is gesso, but I think there's probably better out there. So I've had that a while. Um, the Distress uh, Collage Medium. Now, I've used this um, several years ago when I was working on all my purses, remember, that I did? So this, I'm not, you know, this I've used before. I'm not a stranger to that. But I am a stranger to the texture paste, and I really like this. This is kind of exciting. And uh, I thought I'd bring you up here. I'm in the middle of all this, and this is what I do. I just keep going and going and going, and then I think, wait, wait, maybe they would like, you know, to come along. And I can tell you this. When it comes to mixed media, um, I have a lot to learn. And <laughs> one thing that, that I found a little bit upsetting, but it's kind of like going on Amazon. You know, when you go on Amazon and you're looking... Let's say you're looking for a vacuum and you know you put in the kind you want and stuff and it comes up or you do all this research beforehand and this is the one that would be best for you and then you look at the reviews and someone says this is the best vacuum I've ever used in my life and then the next person says don't buy this vacuum it broke after you know the warranty or what you know what I mean it, it's that happens all the time. And when I was looking at um, mixed media artists um, on their techniques and stuff, which I have looked at through the years, to be honest, like off and on for about four years. And um, through the years, <laughs> four, but you know what I mean. So I'm thinking, okay, this one says, don't ever put um, Mod Podge Mod Podge. I've got it around here somewhere. I didn't use it, but I've got it around here. Don't put that on the bottom. Only use that if you're finished with everything, you know, to, to seal it and everything. Then, the, seriously, then like 30 minutes later, there was another uh, mixed media artist who was putting it all over the bottom and then the next layer and then the next. So I'm like, okay, all right. <laughs> But here's what you learn, and, and this is what I've said when you come to my channel too. You do you. What works for one artist might not work for the next. They might say, it's not my thing, or I don't like it, I'm not using this product, or this is my thing, and I want to put it on everything, you know? So, what I started out doing, okay? Like I said, this was several days ago. This is just a section of it left. I took a piece of 140 pound um, watercolor paper, y'all, and first put my collage medium down and um, tore my pages. Did I keep my pages? I've already put my pages up already. Guys, the desk. After I made my June Bride Gnome, the desk, I had it, it was perfect. And I showed it to Handsome and he smiled. He said, boy, that looks good. I said, it's only going to be like that for about an hour or two. And that was the truth. Now, you look at this. <laughs> One thing I can tell you, I thought if I was going to go with my mixed media, you know, you're dealing with, with the medium and stuff like this. This stuff is water-based. So, you know, your paper's not going to stay perfect like this. Okay. But it bugs the daylights out of me that it, you know what I mean? In fact, my, I have twinchies that are supposed to be here. You see these little pieces of lace and, and applique and stuff. That's for the my twinchies, which are under 
quite a stack of heavy books because here's oh here's some more pieces of this that I'm at the watercolor paper that I did. Um, see there, look at that. That's just driving me cuckoo crazy. And I cut them these guys at uh, two inches because of my twinchies. I need two by twos. So. Um, the interesting thing is this paper and this paper and this paper are um, paper, you know, the, the single sheets of paper you can get at uh, Hobby Lobby and Michael's and a lot of places. Oh, and Joanne's for that matter. But this one, I didn't, I wanted solid. I, I'm one who needs solid paper. And I thought since we're going with paper, I wasn't going to touch cardstock. So, when it comes to this one, all I had was copy paper in the pink like this. Well, the thing is, when you put down your um, collage medium, you don't want any bubbles. And when it came to this paper, the scrapbook paper, it, it does real well, even though I just saw one. <laughs> I just made one, or make one but you know you can go under there and glue it and it'll be fine but um that's one thing you learn about mixed media it's like uh-oh there's a boo-boo well then you just put a couple more layers on it and don't have boo-boo anymore <clears throat> excuse me so one thing i learned though with this copy paper is you just I took my finger and you just keep pushing and pushing because it had bubble after bubble because the first person I watched about, you know, getting your paper ready with the medium, collage medium, said, put it on. Don't just dab a little. That's good enough. I mean, really lather it on there, which I did. Lather, slather, put it on, whatever. So, you know what I'm saying. I don't mean to say whatever. You, you Put it on heavy. There you go. So... I just had to keep pushing and pushing and pushing till I got it nice and smooth like that. But I cut these first because I was looking to see two by two, two by two. Do I want, you know, this doesn't have much of a separate, you know, it, together I had the larger pieces. And you think, well, Corn, why didn't you go small since you're doing these little twinchies and, and then little ephemera and stuff like that? And I was like. No, because I've done, I usually do small with collaging on with, uh, with my journals and stuff and pockets and stuff like that. And I thought, no, I'll be fine. But, <clears throat> excuse me, I found myself like this only has three, has just a tiny section, two, two pieces of paper and then a tiny section of another. So I, I found, oh look, the wind blew my door open. Hanson's not coming in. Nope, he's not there. It's just the wind. So, anywho, back to this. So, I've got that done. And then, I, like you see, I just cut, cut, cut till I get my twinchies, my two-by-twos. And I, I picked the best ones, or the ones that I thought I could work with the best. And like I said, they're, they're warped. And I don't... I mean, a lot of people are cool with warped paper. And I'm cool with warped paper when we put it in dye and stuff like that. You can iron it too. I've ironed it before. But this isn't going to iron because this is, you know, this is heavy. So I'm going to try to flatten it by weight, you know. So, and also you all saw, remember, oh no, you haven't seen it. Yes, you have. I'm going to post that video. <laughs> I haven't posted it yet. Um, I had gotten this puzzle that was 40% off at Hobby Lobby because I wanted the pieces because I wanted to do the ephemera with them. So, these are going to someone else. And I know that she loves sparkle and I know that she loves bling and I know that she loves sweet and pretty and shabby chic and so this to me is like woohoo because you all know I like all that stuff as well so what I ended up doing after 
like I said, you I cut my twin cheese and then I took this piece, as you see, and cut out this, uh, I, let me see, I have a birch. I'm gonna have to do this upside down because it's way too reflective. It will hurt your eyes. EK Tools put out this punch and that's what I'm using. It is two and a quarter inches and that's what I used. And it went through this pretty well. I mean, I had to use a little bit of muscle. <laughs> so, that's what we're doing. Uh, what we're doing. That's what I'm working on. And here's two of my puzzle pieces, um, guys. When I put down my wax paper, because I knew I was going to make this huge mess, and I burst out laughing because when I cleaned off my desk, you all see this is a different color to my mat, and that's because I just flipped it because the other... Matt was looking like, ooh, who'd have thunk it? But I put the gesso on the back, and look at this. When I set it down, I put it on with a brush that was pretty um, wide. And when I put it on, I got too much there. And that's the cool thing with mixed media. It's like, no, that's fine, because it gives you texture. Really, seriously. So after I had put the gesso on front and back, I want to show you I looked at it and I thought, oh, corn, you know better than this. And you could scratch it right off because of this slick, slick surface of the puzzle on this side. So I was like, oh, mercy, I know better than this. So I went ahead and took it off, scraped it off, actually. Um, not with a regular scraper like I do the house walls and all that stuff, but with this. Remember, Handsome got me a set of these that I used in different ways because <laughs> I don't have a cricket. And I just scraped it because it was very easy. It came off pretty easy, as you see. And just scraped it and uh, sanded it all down. And then all these guys got, uh, all of those went ahead and got their gesso on them and their paint on them. And the paint on these is from Apple Barrel, and this is before the pandemic, so I paid like 50, 50 odd cents for it, the Cameo Pink, and I went ahead and got the Cameo, pulled the Cameo Pink, I pulled the other ones as well, because of this flower here. Okay, so we've got, we've got them all done, and then I went ahead and put a uh, white acrylic paint in here, watered it down some. Y'all know this. Y'all have done it for years, probably. Put my paintbrush in there. Nice watery and just flick, 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 flick. And that's why nothing's down yet, by the way, except some washi. Um, hopefully you can see that's why the dots, little white dots are all over. And there's my washi is there. This will be in the corner. A little a butterfly. Oh, my door is just going in and out. We're going to hear some noise on that because I have a, a bunny bag hanging up on a wreath hanger. Something like so. You know, like I said, she loves glitter and, and everything. So, if that door doesn't beha start behaving itself, I'll just go ahead and shut my window. But this, let's get this one. Maybe this, yeah, this will show you. See, just, just flick, flick, flick. And getting some white dots on there. And that's on all of them. And then um, I cut these little corners because I think they're darling uh, on the puzzle pieces. And I cut them with the decorative scissors. And then I fussy cut these out of a paper pad that I have that I love to pieces and I got on Amazon three four years ago three years ago I think and then you know just a just a little something oh I went around the guys that I fussy cut I went around them with distress oxide and sponge sugar and then with ones like this um ooh, as a, I cut the, the piece out like that and then have and fussy cut these guys out of that paper 
And then on this end have the little butterfly. And remember, I just glue them in the middle so they look like they're flying. And that they're, they're also, oh yeah, this one too. They're going to have little pieces of lace underneath this. So, because I know that this individual loves, like I said, shabby chic and lace and glitter and bling and all that good stuff. Since she does like bling, I also pulled these. Do you remember, um, let me see, I've got, got some over here. It's, uh, the, oh boy. This is ribbon that, I don't know if they still sell it or not, that you could use to get at Hobby Lobby, and it's wired. And they had it in the floral section so that you could make beautiful bows for your wreaths and stuff like that. And I was like, they put it on sale. I think it was just 50%. I don't think they put that one on clearance. And I take the... You can cut it in sections and take the little wires out. You could save the wires and use them for a lot of other stuff, too. But, and then I try to, instead of having this straight edge, I take that off and then I just cut it, you know, to where it looks more fun. And so, like, like one of these pieces of ephemera, it has this on it. There's the washi on it. This also is a pearlized acrylic paint that I put on there, and that is from Martha Stewart. And then I'm gonna put this here so that it hangs off a little bit. And then a larger little butterfly here. And I don't know if y'all can see it. Let me, if I keep doing this, maybe you can see there's some paint here and here that is from Folk Art. It's jelly bean pink extreme glitter i think it's got glitter but i don't think it's extreme that's my own opinion and i'm still as you see i'm still just messing with it but i thought you know while i'm up here messing with it you all might be interested in you know and seeing what i'm working on and um just all these layers and layers now when it came to this texture paste that's this guy in a stencil. And y'all, y'all, y'all. Now, I know everybody's thinking, corn. why don't you just do it on your that big sheet of watercolor paper when you, after your collage, why didn't you put down your stencil and all stuff? These are tiny. These are tiny little um, ephemera. So, um, these are tiny little stencils, as you see. And so I put the stencil on and I got those at Hobby Lobby. I'm sorry, they have been put up, y'all, because it was not fun getting to the desk. But let me see if I can, hopefully that's, I can't get too close because I'll lose my light. My light's close by. And hopefully you can see, see the little dots all over these guys? Those were made by putting um, this Martha Stewart uh, multi-surface pearl acrylic paint on in Mother of Pearl. Okay? Um, it's a matter uh, if you can see it. It's in the tray there. It's a matter of watering that down. It's acrylic. And then, you know, taking your brush and getting all those wonderful but you can only see it if you do like so. And there's that um, folk art. I did, I did the little accents on the rose. That's the um, jelly bean pink extreme glitter i i don't think it's extreme it reminds me to be real honest and i'll show y'all too it reminds me of watered down stickles is what it reminds me of see watch let's pop that bubble boop um can you see it's 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 very it's not thick at all and then the opposite of that is the Martha Stewart one that I used. and But yet, it won't. I had to do this twice. I had to paint the two. Um, oh, the stenciled paste. I had to paint that twice. But look, this is thick. That is really, really thick. But... Um, like I said, I still had to paint that twice. But again, it just reminds me of 
stickles. It, and that one just watered down. So I tried adding little things like that. And you saw the pearl paint. And the, you know, trying to add my paint and my washi and my um, texture paste. And then to calm down. They showed us on um, so many videos to calm down this uh, red here. I'll show it to you before, before and after. See, to calm that down a little bit, I put some gesso over it. You can do that. And also, they show us that where you're tearing your papers and, you know, and putting them on your collage, if you take your um, gesso and just sort of rub it where, you know, where the tears and stuff are, it, it blends better. I think it blends sweeter. Let's put it that way. So when it came to the texture paste, I thought I had four things here, but I mean five things, but I can only find four. This is one of them. And this has done three different, <laughs> this has three different layers on it because I didn't like the way it looked at first. I had, um, what is it? It's called, oh, okay. It's called, oh yeah, liquid pearls. Okay, I had the liquid pearls on top of the paste in rose gold because I like gold with pink. But I should know better because I think rose gold looks like uh, almost rusty color to me personally. And yes, I have some rose gold jewelry, very little of it, but um, uh, it looks more like, a, to me, more like, it doesn't look rosy to me. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> I don't want to offend anybody in case you all love it. So that went down. Then the Mother of Pearl went down. Didn't like that either. So then this is the um, Extreme Glitter on that one from Folk Art. And uh, let's see. Oh, then you all saw this one. This is... Um, this is the green leaves, and I told, I told you about Martha Stewart, and I thought beside those leaves, how pretty would that trim be? So that's not on yet. It's just sitting there because I don't know what I'm going to do with over here. That's what that's my process. I sit everything on everything and then say yes, no, yes, no, move this, move that. Then on this one, um, like I said, I showed you, but then there's the scrolling, which is that paste and the paste gives it texture and the paste has it sit up and stuff. So that's really cool. I, I like that. And um, then this one, I think is going to be the recipient's favorite. It's going to be Donna's favorite for sure. Um, I had a tiny little stencil of a butterfly and um, that paste I thought worked perfectly with that because you know what I mean? It's not sitting up too high but it is sitting up and then i went ahead and punched out out of my um, white glitter paper these two little butterflies to say this is the mom and that's the babies <laughs> and then this piece is one of my i'm trying to use a lot of my scraps up also this was a piece of scrap paper that i did i have a punch a border punch that i did if i could do this over again i would have just glued from here to here so I could put teeny tinies. I have a uh, die for tags that are this teeny and I could have put them in there. So I was like, well, live and learn next time. <laughs> so, but um, then what I did with once that the paste was dry, it doesn't take that long to dry, but once it was totally dry, I have been using my uh, heat gun a little, but not tons because you can't overdo it. And this morning, anything that was wet that I was painting, I just stuck on the windowsill because <laughs> there's a little bit of wind, as I told you, coming in. Then I took my stickles in. I think this is moon dust or starlight or some some up above, and just painted the daylights. Took my paintbrush and just dipped it in there. And woo! Oh wait, wait! I didn't put it up. I thought I did. This is it. Oh. <laughs> It's neither one, y'all. It's crystal. <laughs> ah! 
Oh, Lord of mercy. No, it's not moon dust, star dust. Anything. Although I think they do make one like that. And then I just put it in there. And I, well, I put it on this little wax paper. And then just went to town. I mean, I put that on thick. And I'm, I like the way that came out. I'm tickled. So, this one I'm not going to add a whole bunch more to because I think that butterfly just stands out so much, you know, that uh, that's a, I'm pretty sure that one, once I glue down my little ones, that's that's going to be it for that. But, you know, I'm, you know, yeah, you rethink where is the lace going to go? Where is this going to go? Are you going to put an applique? Are you gonna... I would try now with these guys. I'm going to try to keep as flat as possible so that she can put them in a journal if she wants because the, as you know, the puzzle piece itself is already very dimensional. So to add lay on layer, is, unless there's going to be one of them in case she wants to put it on the front of a journal, there's one of them I'm thinking about putting like maybe... Um, like a trim like this or like a ribbon rose or something. I think she'd get a kick out of that. So, as you see, I've just got bits and pieces, just teeny tiny. I'm trying to find as teeny tiny as I can for stuff like this. And my twinchies, I'll show you all those when I get them finished. But like I said, they're sitting under a pile of books. I'm like, oh, I don't like that paper doing that. <laughs> And I want to thank you guys for joining me today. And I hope you have a wonderful morning, afternoon, or evening. Bye-bye, everybody. Take good care.